I want to assure our American allies and the American people and the people of Ukraine that you can count on our support. We will not walk away. The vast majority of both parties, I'll say it again, Democrats and Republicans, Senate and the House, support helping Ukraine. Stop playing games. Get this done. Joining us now to talk about this, retired uh, Lieutenant General Mark Hurtling, a CNN military analyst. General Hurtling, great to see you. That's the president there calling on Congress to get, uh, get busy and pass that uh, funding to continue to support the people in Ukraine, continue to support that fight against the Russians. That, of course, as you know, was snipped out of that uh, stopgap spending measure to keep the government uh, up and running. I, I guess your thoughts on this, General Hurtling, what happens, and I suppose the scenario could emerge, what happens if Congress can't get it done and this funding dries up? What, what uh, message does that send? What does that do to the Ukrainians? Well, it's a couple things, Jim. First of all, you know, there's a very small minority in Congress who are sabotaging the United States foreign policy, and they are influencing in a negative way uh, a fight for democracy and sovereignty and protection of an entire culture and its people by withholding this aid. We have been the leaders in this, in this effort uh, with our Western allies, 50 of them the last time uh, that they met at the Rammstein conference. And for the United States to go through the, the things that President Biden talked about this morning is just despicable in terms of being caused by a very select few in Congress. You know, Jim, I, I, we, you and I have talked, you know me, I, I've spent 16 of my 38 years in the military overseas. And people in other governments watch us very closely. Uh, they trust us to do things. And when they're seeing the kinds of things that are taking place in America right now, they lose some of that trust. So it's not only just how it's affecting Ukraine, which is critical, it's also affecting how we're trusted on the world stage. And could this have a psychological impact on President Zelensky, um, on Ukrainian forces? I mean, Zelensky was just here uh, in the United States uh, in the last couple of weeks, going up to the United Nations General Assembly, going up on Capitol Hill, taking photos with lawmakers who uh, couldn't get this passed over the weekend. Uh, I mean, and to have the rug pulled out from under him, I, I mean, I, I have to think that that would have some kind of effect. Yeah, it would certainly have a psychological effect. And I'm sure that there are leaders in Ukraine right now who are concerned about this. The president, our president, President Biden, uh, promised that this would get done, but he also had a deal with the con congressional Republicans that they would uh, include this in the package in the first place in the initial deal that he made. So it will be a hard push, but in order to regain that trust, which we need on the multinational environment, this has to be done very quickly. There can't be any delays because it's not only going to affect how other people see the United States, it's going to affect the way Ukraine continues with their offensive, which truthfully is gaining some, some momentum in both the Southeast and the East. So it has to continue and it has to be done quickly. There can't be any delays in reestablishing the funding for the weapons and the equipment that go to the Ukrainian armed forces. And if the U.S. fails to get this out of the Congress and over to the Ukrainians, isn't that a win for Putin? Doesn't that bail out uh, Vladimir Putin? I mean, the Ukrainians have had him up against the ropes for some time now. I mean, this was all supposed to be over months ago from their point of view in the Kremlin. And uh, this would just come at a perfect time for Vladimir Putin and just bail him out, wouldn't it? Yeah, well, I'd, I'd, I'd go one step further than that, uh, Jim. I would say that it already has been a win for Putin and those who think like him. They have seen the turmoil and the dysfunction in our government in several ways. Uh, this is just the latest one. So they are continuing to use that mantra among some of our allies to say, the United States is not dependable. You should not trust them as your allies. You should trust us. And in fact, it may give Mr. Putin, and I'm sure it has, if I were a political leader, I would say this is a perfect opportunity to continue to try and extend this conflict uh, more and more and it's going to be difficult, but I think part of Mr. Putin's strategy is to make this a frozen conflict like he's done in four other nations in Europe. So, yeah, I think it certainly does help him. But I think more importantly, it shows the world that uh, there are times when we can't be depended upon because we're leaning toward autocrats and dictators. All right. Uh, you got a, a lot to think about, Lieutenant General Mark Hurling. Always great to talk to you. New 
you're the perfect person to go for this. Thanks a lot for your time. As always, we appreciate it. Well, time now for the exchange, and we want to talk more about some of the challenges facing Ukraine. Let's bring in Alexei Goncharenko. He is a Ukrainian member of parliament for the Odessa region and joins us from the capital of Kyiv. Uh, Alexei, thank you so much for taking the time. Obviously, a lot of focus on what's happening in Europe and uh, what's happening in Washington, D.C., with a stopgap measure put into place to keep the U.S. government open, but strikingly omitting $6 billion in aid for Ukraine. Uh, President Biden says that overwhelming support for Ukraine still exists and that money will come in the future. But it is symbolic that that money was omitted to get a deal done. Speaker McCarthy also says that he supports Ukraine, but not at the expense of U.S. border uh, patrol and safety. What is your response to that now that it seems to have turned into somewhat of a binary issue, support U.S. borders or help support Ukraine? Hello. First of all, I think that is a false choice. Uh, with all respect, I think that uh, U.S. borders should be secured. It's a question of the United States of America and its people, and uh, they are absolutely capable to do this. But to, uh, to uh, have secure United States and secure world, uh, there is a need to support Ukraine. Because without this, if Ukraine would fail, and Ukraine will fail without United States support, to Putin, to Russia, then Russia emboldened Putin will attack and he will go further and he will attack European countries because he wants to rebuild Russian Empire and Soviet Union, how he sees it. And then it will be already American soldiers and officers fighting against Russian army. Today, you know, no one American soldier or officer is taking part in this war. We don't have any boots on the ground and uh, United States can prevent this awful scenario of a really third world war just by financial and military support to Ukraine, which is, I think, the best possible option and one of the best investments in American history. With just 3% of United States military budget, the Ukrainian army destroyed 50% of conventional weaponry potential of second biggest rival of the United States in the world after China, Russia. Alexei, um Zane here, what would you say to American lawmakers, American Republican lawmakers, to convince them of that? Because there is this perception among the GOP, especially hardline GOP members, Republican lawmakers, that the war in Ukraine is not their problem, that the war in Ukraine is Ukraine's problem and that America has already done enough, borderline done too much. Um, you're pointing out the fact that, listen, if Ukraine loses this war, if America allows Ukraine to lose this war, there are far-reaching consequences for the entire world, that the international rules-based order is in jeopardy. How would you convince Republican lawmakers of that argument? First of all, as I told you, this is a great investment uh, by securing and keeping alive American soldiers and officers. Just imagine, like I met one American officer, uh, he Marine, he said that for all his life, he's now retired, but he said, all my life, I was preparing for the war with Soviet Union and with Russia. And now you are stopping Russia without any one American soldier and officer involved and killed. I think that is great. Secondly, uh, what I would tell to lawmakers from Republican side, what would President Reagan say about what they're doing today? Uh, those who are attacking support of Ukraine. Thirdly, what I would say, uh, if Putin will continue his aggression, the whole Europe will be in mess. And Europe is the biggest trade partner of the United States of America. So millions of jobs in the United States are dependent from what's going on in Europe. All, United States, all states of the United States of America, their biggest trade partner is European Union. And what will be with the United States, with the economy of the United States, if Putin will disrupt uh, Europe uh, how he wants to do this. And finally, what I would say, United States showed leadership and already spent more than $100 billion in support of Ukraine. So to stop now means mm -hmm. just to throw out this money. They will be just wa wasted money. And, and that is a very, very bad and very strange decision to make.